Hi, welcome to my topic circuits and networks. I am Ravikant Mala Joshila and today we are going to discuss with problems and solutions involving dependent and independent sources. Dependent sources. If the behavior of any current or voltage source depends upon some other sources, then they are categorized as dependent sources or dependent sources are those sources whose value depends on a voltage or current elsewhere in the network. Broadly, dependent sources are classified into four types. First one is voltage controlled voltage source. Next one is current controlled voltage source. Then you have voltage controlled current source. And finally, you have current controlled current source. How we are going to implement these kind of problems involving dependent sources? Let us start with an example of representation of dependent sources. This particular example you can see you have a diamond stripe box plus and minus and you have a multiple variable 3vx so it's a variable which is multiplied with this particular box so this box which is in diamond shape it's a voltage source multiplied with amplitude of 3 variable vx so hence it becomes a voltage control voltage source abbreviated as vcvs similarly you can have ix and you can see a diamond box plus and minus symbol so it becomes a voltage source and this is a variable ix so it's a current control voltage source abbreviated as CCVS. Then you can see an arrow mark inside a diamond box. This becomes a current source unlike the previous one. This becomes a current source and it is multiplied with a variable VX multiplied with another amplitude mu. So this becomes voltage control current source. And finally you can see another diamond box with an arrow mark. This becomes a current control current source. So these are the typical examples or the different types of dependent sources and practically we see these type of dependent sources in electrical circuits and networks. Let us start with the first problem. Find the power delivered by the dependent source. This is a dependent source. What type of dependent source? Voltage control, voltage source in the figure 1. So we are going to apply here KVL to the given figure. Then you are going to see a current direction in clockwise. This is assumed direction and applying KVL which gives us the value as minus 10 plus 2i plus 3VA. This is the value of the voltage source given to us. So plus 3VA plus 2i is equal to 0. With this, we have framed one equation and we have to understand where exactly this variable VA is. VA is across 2 ohms. So the voltage across 2 ohms is nothing but according to ohms right it's 2 into i. So it becomes 2i. So we have to replace either i in terms of VA or VA in terms of i. So we are going to get the value of i here as 1 ampere. Once we get the value of VA as 2i which is i is equal to 1 ampere then we can obtain the value of VA and once the value of VA is obtained we can calculate the power delivered by the dependent source. So VA will become as what 2 into 1. So the power divided by the dependent source here, this is the dependent source whose voltage value is 3VA. So 3VA we are going to replace instead of standard formula V and I it is nothing but the current which is 1 ampere. So 3VA is the dependent voltage source value multiplied with I. Here you can see the direction of the current is minus. Why it is minus? Because it has to deliver the current. When it is going to deliver the current, the dependent source, it will deliver the current means the current is going to leave this terminal. The current which when it is going to leave this terminal and the loop direction of the current chi are quite opposite. So that is why it is minus i. So this 3 multiplied with VA, VA value is 2 into i. So 2i into minus i. This is the actual branch current which is quite opposite to the loop current. So this gives us the value as minus 6 watts. So if the power delivered by the dependent source is minus 6 watts, then it is understood that the power absorbed by the dependent source is plus 6 watts. So this is one example which is helpful to understand the behavior of dependent source for a particular network. In the next problem you can see find the value of current Ix. Ix is placed over 2x, 2 ohms here. So we need to find out Ix here. So we are going to start with the KCL to the given problem. To go with the KCL, we have to identify the proper nodes. Here you can see on the top of the given circuit, we can identify as a V as the higher potential value and at the denominator we can assume to be a zero volts value. So the upper plate and lower plate are fixed now. 
once these values are fixed you can have the branch currents which is flowing in 1 ohm in series with 12 volts another branch current in 6 ohms this 4 ix is the current dependent current source so it is entering towards the particular node and you have a branch current ix in 2 ohms so applying kcl we are going to have one branch current over here another branch current over 6 ohms third branch current over 2 ohms and the current source it is entering towards the node so this will give us the equation as v minus 12 whole divided by 1 plus v by 6 4 ix is the current control current source it is entering towards the node that is why it is minus 4 ix plus v by 2 so this is the equation we have framed using kcl so we can get the value of ix which is flowing in 2 ohms with the parallel voltage which is placed between all the branches so ix is nothing but v by 2 so ix is v by 2 substitute this value in equation 1 then we are going to get the complete equation in terms of voltage which gives the value of voltage to be minus 36 volts once we get the value of voltage as minus 36 volts we can get the value of ix which is nothing but v by 2 so ix is equal to minus 36 by 2 which is equal to minus 18 amperes now whatever the value of current we got in its magnitude form in the direction form this can be cross checked with the help of any other method so i am going to elaborate this with another method with the help of mesh analysis so i am taking three loop currents here i1 i2 i3 mind you we need to find out the current in 2 ohms so for that we have to frame the equations if at all you carefully observe this current control current source is the current source which is placed between loop 2 and loop 3 so this becomes a super mesh so this problem is a special case and it can be treated as a super mesh problem and remember this i3 is nothing but the loop 3 current which is quite equivalent to the branch current ix so we need to get the value of ix what we got in the previous case as minus 18 amperes let us start with the problem so we are going to apply kvl to the loop 1 which will give you the value as minus 12 plus 1 i1 plus 6 i1 minus i2 equal to 0 now this is a simple loop we got the equation as 7 i1 minus 6 i2 equal to 12 this is the first equation now dependent current source is shared by two loops as i already told you you can see the directions of i2 and i3 i3 is aligned with 4 ix whereas i2 is quite acting opposite to 4 ix so i3 minus i2 equal to 4 ix it's a super mesh first equation with this you are going to get the value of i2 is equal to minus 3 i3 this we treat as second equation now already we have first equation and second equation now we have to get the third equation which is a super mesh second equation so collect the rest of the elements connected to two loops together so this entire parameters which are connected to this we, that we have to collect here so we have 6 i2 minus i1 then you have to come back to 2 2 i3 is equal to 0 you can see on the left hand side as well as on the right side of the loops you have 6 which is having the current which is the difference of i2 minus i1 and here you have only one current that is ix or i3 so with this three equations we can get the value of i1 to be 48 amperes i2 to be 54 amperes and i3 is equal to minus 18 amperes the value of current which we got here and the value of current which, which we got in the previous case are one and the same so you employ super mesh analysis or you employ normal node analysis you have to get the same answer that is the final conclusion of any problem since since ix is equal to i3 so i'll say that ix is equal to minus 18 amperes in a third example we need to calculate the voltage developed across 2 kilo ohms this is a 2 kilo ohms and the plus symbol and minus symbol of voltage measured across 2 ohms it is shown here and this voltage is going to show its effect on this dependent source this is a current source which is having the impact of vx so it becomes a voltage controlled current source so this is the circuit which is given to us we are going to take the parameters which are given here we have four passive elements 2 kilo ohms 500 ohms 1.5 kilo ohms and 1 kilo ohm three sources 120 volts 20 volts and this is a dependent 
current source that is voltage dependent current source so two independent voltage sources minus 120 on this side and plus 20 on this side when you're going to apply the kvl you find the difference so we have two independent voltage sources and one voltage dependent current source so with these given parameters we'll start applying the kvl to the loop one this is a loop one minus 20 minus 120 volts plus 2 kilo ohms multiplied with the current i1 this is a drop over here so in fact vx is equal to 2k i1 plus 500 i1 plus 20 equal to 0 this gives the value of the equation by applying kvl to the loop 1 so 2.5 kilo times current i1 is equal to 100 volts because minus 120 you have plus 20 you have so this gives you a value as minus 100 on the right side when you are going to flip the value it will becomes plus 100 and this gives us the value of i1 to be 0 0.04 amperes so once we get the value of current i1 we can get the value of vx vx is equal to 2k i1 so we'll get 2000 this is 2k so 2000 times i1 which is 0 0.04 which will give you the value as 80 volts so this is the value of the voltage developed across 2 kilo ohms once we get the value of the voltage developed across 2 kilo ohms we can as easily find out the value of current in 1 kilo ohm this current i it is acting quite opposite to the direction of the current source dependent current source which is flowing in this direction it is flowing in clockwise so this direction of the current is i2 is acting quite opposite to the actual i so i2 is nothing equal to it is equivalent to 2 vx it's a given voltage controlled current source which is equal to minus i so this is an important equation which we have to concentrate while solving these kind of problems once we obtain the value of i is equal to minus 2 vx and already we have calculated the value of vx is as 80 volts so we can get the value of i as minus 160 amperes it's a very important and a special case problem and here you can see the directions are very important so we have need to concentrate while taking kvl or applying any other method before solving this problem identify where exactly the value of vx it is this is 2 vx and vx is framed over here so these are the key points which you have to understand in order to solve this kind of problems in the next example you can see we need to find out the voltage across ab ab is the value of the branch current which we need to find out over 2 ohms and we need to find power delivered by dependent source now this is the dependent source it has a voltage vs by 6 this vs you can see it is framed over here on the left side vs value is 100 so you can easily apply a value of vs to be equal to 100 wherever it is required so assuming va voltage at this particular node and applying kcl at this particular node i am going to apply kcl this particular node so we are going to get va minus vs divided by 2.5 plus 1.5 so this is the branch resistance on this particular case plus va by 2 va by 2 this is the particular branch resistance and you have current source this is a voltage dependent current source and it is entering towards the node so it becomes minus vs by 6 is equal to 0 so this is an important equation to be framed first then substitute the value of vs wherever it is given if the value of vs is 100 volts substitute the value you will easily get the value of va so this is an important derivation what we need to frame for the given problem so this equation we have made it one and we are substituting the value of vs is equal to 100 once we substitute the value of vs is equal to 100 we'll get the value as va minus 100 by 4 plus va by 2 minus 100 by 6 now with this we'll get the value of va which is going to be 55.56 so with the value of va is 50.56 once we get the value of va we can easily get the value of current over this particular branch so the current is VA by 2. So the value of VA is 55.56 divided by 2, which will give you the value as 27.77 amperes. So one parameter we have already derived from the given problem. Now we need to find out the power developed by this voltage source. So given voltage dependent current source value is VS by 6. So VS is 100 over here. So the power delivered by the dependent source it will be voltage times the current so voltage is vs times the current is vs by 6 so 100 into 100 by 6 
so this becomes 1666.66 watts this can also be written as 1.6 kilowatts so this is how we solve the problems involving dependent sources in the next tutorial i am going to discuss some more problems involving dependent sources using mesh analysis and node analysis and some more numericals with super mesh or super node analysis so if you like my video please like it share it subscribe among your friends and please press the bell icon for the future notifications thank you